Hello, Nathan. We're going to take a look at your aesthetics and control posting here, as well as your son as key posting. Uh, let's uh, kind of start off. We'll just uh, kind of look at here at uh, to hold with the shutters. Just kind of checking out the, the overall um, posting, see how you did. Focus f-stop, right? This is the aperture. Uh, not sure what we did there in the beginning here with just a couple of images, but uh, looks like then you kind of got the sequence there. Um, <clears throat> equivalent exposures. We'll talk about that because these are kind of all over the place. Um, we'll, we'll get to those um, <laughs> just for fun. Uh, you know better. Um, all right. Well, it looks like you have all the categories there. We'll kind of start back up at the top here and, um, and take a look. With the shutter speed uh, exercise, what I was looking for you guys to explore um, were, of course, the, the, the shutter control um, on your camera. Some of you had had uh, a tougher time with that um, than others, um, but also the visual consequence of the shutter control. It's not just a number. A thousandth of a second can be very abstract, but um, a thousandth of a second produces a certain type of look. It also demands a certain kind of lighting and a certain kind of preparation. You can, uh, uh, you, you might've experienced, you had to put a lot of light down in order to, um, to make the exposure at a thousandth of a second. One thousandth of a second is a small little fraction of a second. Um, and a thousand thing, something happening a thousand times in one second is very short. So you have to show a lot of light there because even with the camera wide open, meaning that aperture opens wide up, it still requires a lot of light to expose properly. That's why a lot of um, yours are darker. Um, that's why a lot of others are darker on that thousandth of a second. It's because it, it requires that. The other thing is because the aperture is wide open, and that is because you have such a fast shutter speed, um, your depth of field is very shallow. Now we'll get to what depth of field um, later on, but basically what that is, is the depth of things that are in focus gets really, really narrow. And so therefore your target area of things that are in focus and not in focus, not just blurry or not blurry because of movement, but just in focus or out of focus becomes a, an issue. So there's all sorts of challenges um, at a thousandth of a second. Um, I can see here that you managed to pre-focus or you managed to focus here down on the table, which is a good idea. Pre-focusing on things that are uh, not moving is a good strategy. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you were hoping to do here with the composition. Um, it would have been probably a better idea to have come in just a little bit, move the camera in so that this corner wasn't sort of happening um, maybe if it was just sort of off to the side there, if you if you cropped it here, came in closer, it would have been a straight line and you would have had more emphasis on really what you were trying to get us to see, which seems like this information um, right in here. You can see how that works in this next image. Um, with that straight line, suddenly we're very acutely aware of the objects as opposed to here, where it's it sort of gets away from us here, not just because we're farther away, but that corner really does um, do it. Um, I like what you're doing here with the angle. You got the camera on the ground. I'm assuming just on the table there. Now here we went. Uh, the exposure got a little bright on you. You uh, went ahead and increased the um, the 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 shutter speed to an eighth of a second. Um, that was after the, the two seconds, eighth of a second. But for some reason, your camera did not compensate the other way with the aperture. I'm not sure why, whether you had it on manual and it just didn't do it for you or, or what. But here, it's so bright because you made an adjustment and it didn't compensate for you uh, on the other end. In other words, when you expand out the shutter speed, the aperture has to get smaller. So the more time, the less light to pass through the hole. The, the less time, that short thousandth of a second, the aperture had to open wide up to let all that light in. The eighth of a second is a lot more time, so it wants to 
move that aperture down. If it doesn't, what happens is it lets all that light in for a longer period of time, you get this really overexposed looking um, image, way too bright. Now, it looks like later on, I think, um, it got kind of, it, it, it sort of, maybe you figured it out, it was too bright, and then you um, maybe made the correction yourself. Uh, I'm not sure, um, but you, it got corrected either way, and this is, this is much more close to what we want to do. In the future, I would just delete, I wouldn't have those images in there because they are, you know, um, not necessary. They're, they're not um, uh, well-exposed images. This kind of gets you there. It looks like then you even um, went a little bit farther here. Um, I think this is a, a pretty interesting image. Um, these two images, this one, I don't know. Um, this one seems to be a little bit more dynamic than this one. Um, I think more is going on with this. You got more exaggerated movement happening. There's a lot more energy going on. Um, you did divide the composition here into two um, halves, which creates a what's called a dichotomy. Um, you might have tried to um, perhaps lower the horizon. Um, I don't know, you probably couldn't do that if your camera is sitting on a table. I don't know if you are or not, but um, if the table was down um, a little lower, like for instance, the table ended right here and, and the, um, the the tree branches ended right here where I'm moving the, the cursor, um, then what you would have done is split it up into thirds and you'd have a lot more of, a of, of an energy going on. You'd have this gravity that's happening and that pull would have been more exaggerated. Right now, what you have is this tension between two spots because you've evenly divided the horizon. Just a compositional strategy. This one's quite interesting as well. I, I, I really appreciate the movement you were able to capture here and the abstraction that's formed. Really a beautiful image here, um, what you've been able to, to do here. Um, that's really an interesting thing. Again, I think if we had um, chosen to set the horizon either a little bit higher up or a little bit higher down, you would have had a, a more um, dynamic uh, balance in the uh, in the image rather than splitting it right into two like that. Um, and then for some reason we have a, I guess it's a piece of paper. Yeah, that's the handout there. Um, I'm not sure that was a misfire or something. Um, and we come back um, to some overexposure again. So again, you dialed in probably the two seconds now and didn't it didn't compensate again. So um, I, you're, you're seeing the consequence when you move one of the the uh, controls, you have to move the other one the other way. Now, I'm going to guess at this point that you probably had your camera maybe on on manual control. And as you turned it from an eighth of a second to two seconds now, it went back to this really bright um, uh, 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 image. Uh, that's what you get. You went from an eighth to even more time now. If that, if that f-stop didn't change, it's still open to properly expose that eighth of a second. Now you give it at more time, it's going to make it too bright. So that visually, you can see exactly what's going on there. That said, you do have some really interesting things going on with a movement here. It's a shame that the table got uh, way overexposed like that. Um, you can get away with a certain degree of overexposure. Um, don't get me wrong. I mean, that that you can get away with a high key image. Uh, this image here is like right on the border there. It looks like maybe you started to try to compensate a little bit there. Like you saw it and turned it down a little. I would just say continue to make photographs so you have plenty to choose from. Uh, you shouldn't have to put images like this um, into the um, into the, uh, the the series. Uh, when you see stuff like this happening, go ahead and and not choose those and, and choose ones that are better exposures for yourself because you've got some really quality stuff here. I mean, I really think you you've got a a, a kind of um, uh, an aesthetic happening, but um, some of the te technical things um, maybe are getting in your way a little bit. So now we're getting to the um, to the f stops. The first couple of images, again, I'm not sure. We just have a you know like one, two, and then we go to another composition where it looks like here now you're going through the proper steps, um, getting us to um, the uh, uh, through the f stops. You could see and basically this is a straightforward exercise. This is where I'm just having you start out at a really shallow depth of field. 
and I just want you to control the f-stops. I want you to control the f-stops, let the camera control those shutter speeds again, so that it balances out each time you open up the shutter speed or, or I mean, open up the aperture or close down the aperture, the time has to be adjusted uh, accordingly. So when you're doing this, um, I just need you to, I just really want you to be um, paying attention to what's the difference between one f-stop and another f-stop so that you have a visual to go along with the number. So it's no longer an abstraction. When we say f8 or f11 or f5.6, these aren't just random numbers. These are pictures in your mind. Like this is what it will do for me. That's all that this part of the exercise was. Um, set it up, go through it, Learn what your camera can do, what it can't do, you know, what the range is that it's giving you and uh, work through it visually so that you'll know what you have. Um, so um, now we get into the equivalent exposures. Now here, what I'm having you do is what seems to trip you up in the other one as well, where what we want is for you to start with an exposure of a particular um, setting, calibrate the light so it looks good, um, then make some changes to that exposure um, with the shutter speed and then compensate it with the aperture. It's doing both of them. So again, like I've been saying all along, you change one, the other one has to change in the opposite direction. This is called reciprocal relationship. So as the shutter speed changes, the f-stop has to change as well, or it's going to get way too bright. So this part of the exercise was having you do that manually. And if you change one and don't change the other one, you result in a really dark image like this. So that's basically what was going on with some of these really bright images, unfortunately. So it's a learning experience. Uh, I don't give you these exercises because I think you know how to do it already. I give you them so that you can work them out and 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 um, uh, and and puzzle them for yourself. These are not easy things to um, to learn how to do right away. So looking at your um, at your new know better, it looks like you're um, um, kind of working on some of the. Uh, exposures still. Um, you know, believe it or not, I, I, I find some quality in this kind of an image. I think this is a really interesting direction. Um, who says that a, that a photograph has to be of a, a sharp object? This is a color field. This could be a beautiful, uh, large uh, color field painting that someone would do, and you wouldn't second guess it, would you? Um, something like this is really good, and I, I think it's great that you are um, not apologizing for uh, images like this. You know, this is uh, could be um, your kind of photography. Um, you know, these kinds of images, they, they're much more straightforward. Um, out of focus, yes, but uh, much more straightforward. Um, here you're playing around with light a little bit more, which uh, I think is, is, is kind of a good idea. We're a little bit off on, on focus once again. Um, you got a little bit too much depth of field going on. If this background here was out of focus, this, this curtain back here was soft, I think you'd be getting more of that atmosphere that you're creating or trying to create with the light. Um, the thing about photography is everything in front of the camera is part of your image. So you really have to pay attention to absolutely everything. Um, that's why we call it reductive, um, because when you point it at something, the process is removing, really. You're getting rid of stuff, either physically getting rid of something or visually getting rid of it by blurring it out or darkening it, making sure light doesn't hit it, stuff like that. So it's all about reducing. These kind of minimal things seem to be more where you're drawn to um, shooting stuff like this. And this is kind of an interesting thing. Graphic designers would love this kind of an image because you could lay text in there and all that kind of stuff. So and then we have images like this. I don't I, I don't think it's necessary for you to put these here. Don't worry about putting images like this. I'd rather you um, limit it to the ones that you feel really good about. And don't worry about putting images that are, you know, um, like this, which, you know, really, I know, you know, these are too dark. We don't need to, to put them up there. So, um, you know, and then you could add them later when, with a resubmit or something like that. So it's, it's okay if you, you know, didn't get the kind of images that you're looking for, um, but I wouldn't just kind of fill or put fillers in there um, that, that the, they're obviously not 
you know, great photos to um, represent your work. Yeah, your work is much better than that. So anyway, let's jump all over to your um, your uh, son as key here um, and see what we have. All right. So this was the intermediary thing where I had you guys in teams uh, being out there. And um, here it looks like, let's see, what, what did you qualify this one as? Did we qualify this one as, uh, um, yeah, direct sunlight. Okay, so you're in the shade here uh, under the direct sunlight. So you've got a bit of a, a, bit of a shade uh, situation going on here. Um, you got it out of the sun, which is a good thing, um, but the contrast is way too too much here. I think you're under a cover of some sort. You got something over your head here. Now, I'll explain how this works. You have direct sunlight, and that direct sunlight is out here. Um, it's hitting right out there. Then you have what's called shade, which is whenever you have something covering completely, um, it's called deep shade, actually. When you have a cover over something, it's called deep shade. And in order to expose deep shade, what ends up having to happen is whatever's in the bright light, whatever in the, in the direct sunlight becomes overexposed. In other words, too bright. The reason for this is something called the dynamic range. The difference between the brightness of the brightest brights and the darkness of the darkest darks is too far. It's too, too much distance between those two things. And so therefore the camera is not capable of capturing detail in both of those ends. So you wind up having to choose which one. Here, it's chosen to capture the detail in that deep shadow area, which resulted in the images up above here, all this to be like blown out white, which is you know not exactly appealing um, to look at. So what we would wanna do would be one of two things, either A, reflect more light down into this deep shadow so it balances out a little bit more, or find a space where it's not deep shadow with a cover, maybe open shade where it's not so, uh, so much light covering um, there. But the difference between these two, from what I can see, looks like it's too different, too much, dif uh, too much difference between those two um, elements. And that's what's going on there. Here, when you have more of the open shade, where direct sunlight isn't actually hitting too much um, of, the, of the area, this is probably the more ideal um, situation to work with during midday, which is the time that we that we did this in. Um, so these two photos, um, I think we talked about these uh, this idea of um, the same image twice. And we really, what we're looking for here is, is different images. Um, we have that here as well, where you have basically the same image twice. Um, and unless we say take the same image twice, um, we want to avoid that. We, I, you know, I want to see you explore. I want to see all the different possibilities. Even when we just had two images, those two images should be maybe related of the same objects or same subjects, but different perspectives, different viewpoints, all of that kind of stuff. I mean, it's not necessary for us to see these two images next to one another. They're so close to what, to each other that one or the other tells the story well enough, right? So what's the other part of the story you can tell us? Same thing with this. Um, is there, you know, oh, well, this is actually a little bit different. Uh, you, you've gone ahead and kind of played around with it a little bit here on um, um, putting it inside there. That's a little bit a little bit more of a, of a thing, but you kept the same perspective. Um, you didn't necessarily move your camera a whole lot. Photography really demands that you move a lot. That's one of the things that, um, you know, photographers tend to do quite a bit is, is explore. Um, you we're more like um, archeologists. We dig around for the images. We look for all over the place. We look under things, over things, you know, we're climbing up on stuff and trying to get that angle and all of those kinds of things to find our, our, our photographs. It's rarely ever gonna be right in front of us while we're standing up. Um, so you want to kind of explore in that way. Give your give yourself an opportunity to find images in, in more unlikely um, in more unlikely places. 
Um, now, these two images are, are, are what I'm talking about when I say different perspectives. This is a good job here where you've got this angle and it's much farther away. You're incorporating a lot of color and a lot of shape here. Um, you got direct sunlight hitting on it, but I, it seems like it's dull enough, not enough direct sunlight that it's overpowering it. Um, here's another kind of an interesting thing, but, you know, your angles are a little bit off here. Um, I think we could uh, see how this uh, line be, they, it really is really tight right here. I think if we looked at this and maybe cropped a little bit or we adjusted where your camera was just to clean up the edges, um, is this the right angle that we're looking for? Just right, the right angle? Um, photo again, photography is about subtlety. It's about removing everything until you're right at the right moment. Removing things can sometimes mean just tilting down just a little bit, um, a millimeter or two sometimes, and it kind of cuts this off a little bit. And what it'll do is it'll create a shape rather than tension in that one spot. So you got a lot of really good things going on with your photography, but I think there's some fine tuning stuff that you could really focus on that would just take it to the next level. I, I mean, I think intuitively you're looking at the right things. I think maybe just maybe mechanically you haven't quite become one with your camera yet. You haven't quite um, uh, uh, taken that next step. And I think it'll come. I mean, I think you're right there. If you continue working on this, that you're going to get the point where it'll click. Just about everybody I work with, um, some a little bit sooner, some a little bit later. But ev eventually, if you keep making photographs, it's going to just click and your the camera will no longer be a a mechanical tool. It's just a device to capture what you see. And that's where I would hope to get you um, at, at some point, because I think you have a lot to say. Um, I think photography could be a way that you can say it. So I look forward to more of your images and uh, we'll see you in the studio. All right. Bye now.